All right, welcome back. There's a question here in the chat. And now Saul Bhagya asks Pastor how to increase God's anointing in our life. Yeah, so three main things. One is reading God's word. Two, prayer. Three, worship and listening to the Holy Spirit. So I think the more we spend time in God's presence, the more we are surrendering to the work of the Holy Spirit, and the more He releases the anointing upon our lives. So again, like what we learned, anointing are in different, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is in different levels. If I want to go to a higher level, I have to do something about it. I have to spend more time. So for example, I'm praying every day half an hour. Say, hey, I want God to use me more. So I, I want to pray more. So let me pray for one hour. Or I'm reading Bible for 15 minutes every day. Say, God, I want, to, I want you to anoint me even more. So let me read some more of God's word. And then I am say, OK, 30 minutes of uh, reading God's word. The more I spend time in God's presence, the more I'm opening my life to the anointing of the Holy Spirit to work. Right? Now, that's not necessarily only for, so for example, you're working in the, we'll talk about the corporate anointing. You're working in the corporate sector, and you have, you're a team leader. You have to make decisions. You can say, God, this is an important decision that I have to make. I need your anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit also comes with wisdom. Right? The gift of the Holy Spirit is wisdom. So he can release wisdom. He'll say, you do this. I can share many instances in my life where God very clearly spoke to me and said, don't do this. And I thank God for the wisdom. Or don't speak this. Don't say this. Or don't, don't appoint this person as a leader. Or don't. You know, or, or do this, don't do this many times. How is it? It is because when the anointing is released, maybe we're just praying, right? When the anointing is released, the gifts are released, and he begins to minister to us, right? So, so Bhagya, I hope that answers your question. This being more in tune with God. Uh, okay, so Moses. We were talking about this. Moses transferred some of his, uh, some of the anointing over the 70 elders. Elisha received a double portion of Elijah, but primarily through obedience. Uh, and, and, you know, that work was continued on through Elisha. Then we also see that the Apostle Paul, uh, through the Apostle Paul, we saw that the anointing can be transferred through things, right? Like handkerchief oil right so if i'm if water many times we can just say you're praying over the phone you say okay take a glass of water and you're praying you're saying god let the anointing of the holy spirit come upon that glass of water even as this person drinks whatever pain whatever sickness he or she is going through we bring healing now it's not about the water it can be purified water it can be tap water it can be borewell water doesn't matter it's not about the water. It's about the anointing that is working in that water. So even, even medicines, right? You can take medicines and you say, Lord, I pray over this medicine. It will do all the work that it has to do. And you bless it, Lord, and you anoint this medicine. And thank you that you're going to heal me. I take medicines. I'm not superhuman. Very rarely. But I do take I just pray over it and I take it. That's it. Now, my hope is not as, oh, I took medicine. No. Why is the pain still there? Why is the pain still there? No. My hope is, God, I know you are my healer. You will heal me. The anointing of the Holy Spirit will break this sickness over my life. But I also say, God, I've been faithful in taking, doing what I have to do. That through this medicine, you will bring the healing. Okay? Now, let's look at corporate anointing. As believers, it is important that we must walk in a corporate anointing. There is a place for personal anointing, 
right that is we all are we all have a call and a purpose god anoints us anoints us and we are used by god but what about corporately the word corporate means together many people so now you know there's a, there's all of us here we're all going for the youth missions so we need to pray lord even as we're going for youth missions corporately use us to be a blessing to those who are coming right. last year when we had the conference we had a wonderful time you know where many of them were you know, flowing in the gifts of the spirit and uh, those who came were so blessed because our young people were prophesying word of knowledge praying for healing deliverance and these are other young people from some of them are from their own cities or from their own towns right uh, and this year we have a bigger crowd so get ready right you have to be able to minister to people as well so when people worship in second chronicles 5 when people worship the glory cloud of his presence filled the temple and people could not stand to minister that's in the old testament now the early church walked in corporate anointing let's see look at a, uh, look at this example in one accord in Acts chapter 2 the early church is praying for the anointing of the holy spirit praying for the baptism of the holy spirit and then we see that they were in one accord how can you and I be in one accord through the anointing, right? Imagine 120 people, they were united, they shared things, they fellowshiped with one another. They continued in prayer and unity and preaching of God's word, preaching and studying of God's word, right? When we are in this state, and then we come to pray and worship God together. We are going to experience levels and greater and higher levels of anointing upon our lives. Now, think of this. Every day you have supernatural hour. Yes? Now, how do you go to that supernatural hour? Do you go? Oh, supernatural hour. When will this supernatural hour get over? I don't know. So you'll be looking at the watch. In 10 minutes, 10 times you look at the watch. Now, don't expect God to speak to you. Why? Some of you I know, you know, I, I told you, no, I teach, I've been teaching for how many years? More than 15 years here. Ah, you see the clock. You think I don't know? <laughs> Some of them, the phone is right in front, so you just look like this and it's okay. Now the point, what I'm trying to say is, see, we need to come out of all of that. If we want to, there's a greater sacrifice needed. As a corporate, corporately, if we want to see God's presence and we want to touch greater levels of God's glory, we have to be in one mind, in one accord, with one heart. Right? The moment we are in, you know, thinking, oh man, when will this get over? Now, physically, or in our mind, we may think that, but we need to overcome it. You may feel, oh, I'm getting tired. Overcome it. That's a battle. We need to learn how to overcome it. It's very simple. I don't like to get up in the morning. I like to sleep. I like to get good rest. But I know that, hey, if God is using me, and there are people that I am serving in the church, in Bible college, wherever I'm going, I can't do it on my own strength. So I have to sacrifice some things in my life. And I keep telling myself, oh, it's okay. I can sleep. It's okay. Today I'll sleep. It's okay. God will not go, you know, strike me down because of that. But there are times I, I have to tell myself, no, do it. Overcome it. Finish what you have started. So there are times we will have to do that. We will feel, you know, in the natural, oh, I'm uh, feeling tired, feeling weary. But you overcome it. You got to come, you got to become mentally strong. It's an ability that we develop it's like mentally strong. And you tell yourself, I will do it this way. When you're mentally strong, you will able, you'll be able to achieve only even in the natural. If you look at entrepreneurs, you look at businessmen, businesswomen, why are they able to do so much? 
there's no anointing of the Holy Spirit, nothing there. How come they're able to do so much? Mentally strong. Mentally, they have decided, even if I have to live on the road for six months, I will live. But one day, I will become a millionaire. Have you seen those people? I've, seen, I've, I've read about their lives. Mentally, mental strength. That is not even the Holy Spirit. There will be people from other faiths. But mentally, they're able to achieve 90% of everything that they want to do. Imagine you and I, if we are that mentally strong, accompanied by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, what can we achieve? Yes? And so we've got to start small. Be mentally strong. Tell yourself, tell your mind. Right? Nowadays, all of these new age things that are happening around new age teachings, mind over body. You know, your mind can tell your body what to do. Really, it can. Your mind is so strong. You, you can, if, okay, so for example, if you, if I tell you all, okay, don't have dinner, you can, right? Some of you can, some of you are saying no dinner. Bro. If I tell you all, don't have dinner, can you stay without dinner? Yeah, it's not difficult because you've grown up to an age where you can say, tell your mind, hey, it's okay, one dinner, it's okay, skip it. You can, you're mentally strong. But if I say three days, I have to think about it. If I say 15 days, I have to really think and pray about it. If I say 21 days, it'll either be yes or no. Right? So you, you and I need to develop that ability, mentally strong. You know, sometimes we keep using the laptop, you know, nine to 10 hours of my day goes in front of the laptop. Sometimes I just want to close it and say, you know, eyes are paining, everything is paining. Then tell ourselves, no. If God has to use me, I have to do, I have to overcome. I tell my mind. So go back, study, read God's word, pray, spend time in his presence. And then there becomes an overflow in our ministries. Okay? Then, when we, you and I are anointed and together, powerful things can happen. Let's look at this. Psalms 133, verse 1 through 3. Can we read that? It's in your notes. Talking about, the psalmist is talking about the anointing of Aaron. Yeah, go ahead. It's in your notes. Page 32. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirt of his garments. The dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. So you see that? It's so powerful. It is like the precious oil upon the beard, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down the edge of his garments. It's like dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. Now, I don't know if you've been to any mountainous areas. I'm sure some of you are from there. It's very beautiful, right? Very scenic. And you see those beautiful mountains and you see those clouds there. And sometimes you can see the rain there. And you know, eventually the, the clouds are just going to move and come this side. It's very scenic, very beautiful. It sometimes brings you so much of peace just by seeing that. The Bible says here, it's like dew on Hermon descending on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessings live forevermore. Now, you and I must desire more of his anointing. Individually, corporately. How can I corporately bless somebody else so for example if you see someone in your you know in your friends or in this classroom you see somebody and you you notice that there is this gift upon their life go to them pray for them anoint them say lord you use the anointing of your holy spirit on this area of your life and you encourage them you know, when in my batch there was 
there was one one person he had come from uh, north india and somewhere when i would meet when i you know he came in he was sitting with us sitting with me and he would say you teach me english during the class i don't know english so i would you know just help him out here and there but one day god very clearly spoke to me and i told him hey i feel that god is calling you for a pastoral role and this when you start this being a becoming a pastor god is going to invite you to you know do um, translation work either preaching translation or writing translation i just shared it with him but i didn't know that you know he took it serious he wrote it down in hindi wrote it in his book everything and so then he used to tell me you preach i will translate so during that we used to walk to our hostel it was about a 20 minute walk so one sermon while going he will translate he will search for me after the bell rings and coming back from the hostel one more sermon and he will translate 10 minute break he'll say preach one sermon five minute sermon so i'll preach like this just like how we are sitting in the classroom i would sit he would sit next to me and whatever comes to my mind i'll say he doesn't care all he wants to do is translate i will, I will I'll say five minute sermon he will translate right. and we did this for two years in bible college continues every day two sermons are for sure it's saturday at least three or four sermons i would preach he'll say preach if you're playing football, you'll say, preach, preach, preach one sermon before that five minutes. And he'll translate it. Now, I don't know what to preach. You say, you just, just say what, <laughs> whatever you say, I'll translate. Now, I had to sit and prepare. No. So I used to prepare some 50, 60 sermons, five minute sermon, 15 minute sermon. I had a book. One section I put five minute sermon. One section was 20 minute sermon. Another section was, 30 minute sermon, then 45 minute sermon, and one hour sermon. 400 pages book I had. So I will then say, preach something. I say, wait. I'll open the book and I'll start preaching. Oh, how many minutes? 20 minutes means 20 minute section. I'll open and start preaching. But you know what? After he graduated, he became a pastor. Now people call him to, you know, when you know you have these missionaries or people from different parts of india who come different parts of uh, you know the world also globally these missionaries who come they call him he goes and he translates now he's known as a translator more than a pastor translator you call him he'll come and translate for you you use whatever english word he has one word for that god has anointed him that way now, just because the you know the anointing, you know, like we, the prophetic word came, what I saw in him was I saw him put it into action. And even now, last year he came he came for the Christian Leaders Conference to Bangalore. We have a conference every January. He came. What were we doing in the break? Same thing. Preach. We were sitting in the break time, and I was preaching. And how many years later? Fourteen years later. Still same thing. Hey, we did it in Bible college students. You preach. So then I told him, you preach, I will translate. So we did that. Three days conference, all three days, six sermons we preached to each other. So it's here's the thing. If you and I want to be used, we take that anointing and we use it. We ask God to multiply it. We put in our hard work. Okay? Okay. Then, the tangibility of the anointing. The anointing at times is tangible. What does the word tangible means? It can be... Yes. Yeah, you have a question? Yeah, take the mic and ask. Um, so, Pastor, uh, in anointing, do we have any measures? We can multiply the anointing. Do we need to aid the worldly pleasures and worldly things? Or with that things we can we, we can able to receive or it's, it's can't, right? Because God said you can't serve the worldly things and God. So how to... Yeah. Okay, that's, that's a good question. See, here's the thing. Paul writes it in his epistle. He says, 
everything not everything may, everything may be good but not everything is permissible okay now for example have many youth come and ask me this okay is it okay if i listen to secular songs no bad words no bad language they're talking about boy girl like each other whatever no bad language nothing vulgar out of it but i like the tune i like the song i say you want to listen you listen it's your choice but the end result what i am going to see is is it bringing me closer to god is there is it something that is helping me to walk in the holy spirit is the holy spirit going to anoint that which i see or hear now if i'm listening to a song no bad language nothing it's just a regular song will the holy spirit anoint that you tell me might or might not but in most cases what do you feel now nothing wrong in it but what i'm doing is the time that i want to give for god to improve myself to benefit myself i'm covering that time to do something else right so when it comes to anointing the more i sacrifice the things of the flesh the more the holy spirit is revealed the more the holy spirit is pleased and the more he begins to release the anointing okay now for example there can be a, a pastor or a leader he's 10 years in the ministry now he can spend the next in a day he can spend 6 hours on instagram going up and down up and down facebook instagram all that then he can come and preach anointing will be there right because god's word will release his anointing but god wants him to grow to a next level he doesn't want him to be in that same place hey 10 years he's come to a certain level of anointing but that's not the end it's an overflow it's like water flowing so i need more but what's happening is that person is going on looking through instagram facebook wasting his time there but at the same time he can give to god and increase his level in his anointing so that's all a choice that you and i have right so if i want to do something more for god so if i want god to use me more speak to me more there's a sacrifice that i have to do if i don't do it god will still use us but the anointing levels are going to be different you get is that okay right so there will be a sacrifice you know growing up for example i i i had a lot of friends i go here go there we would travel i love traveling so go to one weekend this place another weekend i will be somewhere else traveling every weekend traveling and keep a time i was in the corporate sector that working in uh, the it sector the keep a time god very clearly told me stop this now i'm not doing anything wrong i was traveling i like to travel i'll go see some places come back with a few friends but god said stop this one is you're wasting if you go on friday all of saturday all of sunday sunday evening you're coming monday morning you're going to work but that saturday sunday you can use to do something else no so then i i said okay out of four sundays two sundays i'll travel you need to dialogue and i said okay god two sundays i'll go so i went two sundays but what happened was the other two sundays when i was at home i would begin to read god's word pray sometimes i would fast on a saturday then i realized this is more interesting than traveling so it became three sundays at home one sunday traveling then i realized i don't want to travel even though i like it but i had to give it up and i said this is better i like to stay at home i like to pray i like to read god's word i'm learning so much so it is something that you, i did personally the same way the holy spirit will bring things in our lives and he'll tell us okay cut this off there are times you'll have to cut off people that's a very difficult time and i had to do it i had to tell i told a few of my friends don't call me 
they are friends with me for 10 years, more than 10 years. I said, don't call me. So what do you mean don't call? See, firstly, I told you, you know, whatever the reasons are, I said, don't call. So there's no point of us talking. It was hard, but you have to do it. So the more we sacrifice our fleshly desires, the things of the flesh, the more we can see the work of the spirit in our lives. Understand? Right. Now, again, I always say this, okay, enjoy your life. It's one life, enjoy it. Do things that you like, but balance it out. Balance it out, uh, especially as youth. There are so many things that you would like to do, right? Whether it's traveling, uh, learning an instrument, going out with friends, do it. Nothing wrong in that. But balance it out. Know that you, okay, I, this time is for God, so I leave it to God. Other time, I can do something else. I remember when I was in Bible college, we were about six, seven, six boys. So one day I said, we'll hire a car and we'll go for a long drive. So I hired a car. I said, all the students sit down. We all went, all the boys. We had a very good time. Just enjoyed. Next Sunday, they're waiting. This week also we'll go. I said, no. Four hours prayer now. I took you out last Sunday, the last Saturday, this Saturday, fasting and prayer. So they had to sit. All four hours of prayer. Oh, you went six hours, no, last Saturday. Yes or no? Three hours you drove, three hours you're sitting on that mountain, three hours to come back, nine hours you have spent talking all unwanted things. Now four hours of prayer you can't do, I made them sit. All sleepy. Sleep here only. But you sit. They listen to me. So you see, what I'm trying to say is you balance out what you're doing. It's a time to enjoy, relax, enjoy, take time, refresh yourself. But there's also a time where you have to press on for God, press on to his presence. OK? Now, the anointing is tangible at times. There are times we can recognize the anointing. The anointing can be recognized by our spiritual senses. The anointing at times can be recognized by our natural senses. So you can, you can, you know, for example, you're very nervous, right? You have to go to preach. And then you go, you go on the stage and then you start preaching. Suddenly you'll feel all the nervousness is gone. Naturally, you are nervous, but the anointing will remove that nervousness and now you feel normal. Sometimes there's a spiritual sense. So you're going to go lead worship. And as you, go, as you go, you begin to lead worship, you feel sudden anointing of the Holy Spirit. You're able to sing. You're able to uh, you know, really declare God's word. And that one hour set will feel like 10 minutes. Why? The anointing of the Holy Spirit, uh, a physical sensation. Sometimes it can be uh, you know, just feeling of warmth or feeling of a coolness in your spirit. Or you know, maybe it could be a physical pain, which will just immediately go away. So physical senses as well. Then the anointing of the Holy Spirit uh, is felt in different ways, like a mantle or like a blanket coming over someone, fire, heat, wind, joy, glory, uh, someone touching you, uh, a feeling of rain, refreshing feeling. How many of you, when it rained, you went out and uh, stood in the rain? Only two of you. When it rained, how many of you went and stood out in the rain? Now, don't go and stand one hour and then say, OK, next day I've got cold. I can't come to class. But how does it feel to stand in the rain? Feel nice, no? Refreshed. Especially if you're from North India, you come here and it's raining. You want to build a house there only. Because it's nice. You feel refreshed. That's what the Holy Spirit does. When the rain of the Holy Spirit comes, it refreshes us. We suddenly, all our weakness is gone, feel refreshed. Then, uh, let's look at the ministry gifts. We talked about this. Difference uh, between the gifts of the Spirit and the ministry gifts. Now, how many gifts are there with the Holy Spirit? Ah. So, the gifts of the Spirit are given by the Spirit. The ministry gifts are given by the Lord Jesus. Now, there's a difference. There's the gifts of the Spirit, nine gifts. The ministry gifts are given by the Lord. That means what? 
we all can flow in the nine gifts but the ministry gift meaning the gift of uh, the prophet the gift of the apostle or the pastor is given by the lord jesus so the lord will appoint us he'll say okay you i want you to be a pastor i want you to be an evangelist he has a you know he, i want you to be a worship leader you will be an administrator right whatever the thing is you will be an engineer you will be a doctor but i will appoint i'll anoint you to do what what you have to do so you have the gifts of the spirit ministry gifts are given by the holy spirit okay the gifts of the spirit are available to all believers ministry gifts are given to few it would be nice if all believers become pastors but it doesn't happen right because there's a call of god in some of our lives some of us god hand picks us and says okay i want you to become this i want you to be a teacher i want you to be a pastor um and so that calling god gives us for our life okay now sometimes we may feel god i don't want to do this like me i don't want to do this i don't want to do this but then god knows how to bring us right? there are times he'll say no this is what i want you to do and uh, sometimes we like to get into the role very beautifully we get into the role that god is calling us to so that again is wonderful the ministry gifts are primarily directed towards spiritual edification of god's people ministry gifts are directed to equipping god's people so when you and i when god gives us a ministry gift as a pastor apostle prophet whatever it is the goal is to equip people you know some of the things that is, you know people keep sending me these videos and clips of what's happening globally around the world especially in terms of a church and it's very sad to see what's happening you know, self proclaimed apostles self proclaimed pastors self proclaimed teachers of the word of god and doing all kinds of things that are not not even in line with god's word right now this is all wrong because whatever gift god has given us it is our main goal is to equip people i tell you the greatest joy for a pastor or a leader is to see their people becoming you know fulfilling the purpose of god in their life that's the greatest joy even now over the years so many students you know they call and they say we have a conference they send us pictures of their conference you know uh, how they are preaching it is such a joy to see that because they were there sitting learning now they've grown up to this place of leadership and they're doing conferences they're doing uh, leading a church it's so beautiful to see that right? that is the point of the gifts that god has given us we need to edify the church edify one another okay totally the gift of the spirit usually is gift of the spirit usually minister to a local body ministry gifts may do this and in addition also minister to the body in a larger context meaning not only to your local church but also to the nation and the nations so something that we do in apc is whatever we learn right we are very focused on equipping to build others so you see all our publications it's free of cost right and uh, uh, we send it out to many parts of india and our goal is to equip people so every year we go for conferences right so we have youth conference we have pastors conference we have leaders conference uh, why because especially we target places where people don't have this kind of teaching this kind of learning then we have bible college we have short term bible college all of this the main goal is to equip the church so in our mind it's not about how will i build apc now 99% of you will finish bible college you'll go back home apc you'll forget about it yes or no right most of us will go back you'll get busy with your work ministry whatever somewhere you'll remember oh apc yeah it's not like we are we are trying to build our ministry it's not about that our goal is to see you go and plant churches do the ministry that god has called you for 
know what would be the greatest joy for me? Five years down the line, some of you just send me a message or a photo saying, you know, I'm preaching here or I'm teaching in this Bible college or I'm doing this. That's the greatest joy. I'm not going to ask, is it part of APC? APC is just an organization. It's just our ministry. But the goal is equip people in the nation and all across the nation. So I've been going for missions for more than 15 years now. I've seen what happens. Many people, many pastors, some of our books like Kingdom Builders and uh, Receiving God's Guys, very powerful books, are talking about uh, the local church, the house of God. We go and teach pastors, and the pastors come to us and say, you know, this is a teaching that we never even thought of. Gifts of the Holy Spirit, we never even thought of all this. So we are going to take this book. Can we teach it in our church? We say, yes. If you want books, tell us. We'll post it to your address also. Now, when they're preaching in their church, they may not even put one APC board or say this is from APC. It doesn't matter. It's not about APC. It's about God's kingdom. So we see the bigger picture. And that's what we want to continue doing even in the coming years. Eventually, we want to start more churches in India. We want to plant many more ministries in India, do Bible colleges. We're going to continue this. Either till the rapture happens or till we go on. This will continue. The ministry, the work of the ministry will continue. Nobody can stop this. God will provide. God knows how to do it. Because our focus is not on the money, our focus is on the people. God will provide the money for us to equip the people. Amen? Right? So it's all about thinking that way. Now, the anointing on ministry gifts. Now, we looked at uh, you know, the anointing in our personal lives. Look at the anointing of ministry gifts. The apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, worship, prayer, administration, all of these are additional uh, gifts that God has for us. Now, there are different kinds of apostolic anointing. Apostles who plant churches, apostles who govern, apostles who birth new movements, apostles in the marketplace, apostles who open new territories. So one person as an apostle can do five different things. Now, a pastor. There are different levels of pastors who are good teachers, pastors who are good leaders in the church, pastors who are very good in administration, pastors who are very good in um, maybe IT right, or graphics, different gifts. Main calling, pastor. But under that, we have several other things that we can do. You can have a pastor who's a very powerful worship leader or a pastor who is very good in writing. Main role, pastor. But there are many other gifts which the Holy Spirit uh, anoints for our using. There are different gifts of anointing for those in the marketplace, some in business, creative design, in government, education, and much more. And Joseph, David, Daniel, all of them God used in the marketplace. All three of them were not into you know, full-time ministry and all of that. Joseph, what was he? Prime Minister. So it was not like everyone came and asked him, tell me, who's the Holy Spirit? He's in Egypt. He had to deal with people, deal with challenges. He needed the wisdom of God. He needed the anointing of the Holy Spirit and leadership. There was no full-time ministry there, Joseph. He was in Egypt, not even in his hometown. Daniel, where was he? Babylon. What's his work? Governor. Again, administration, people come to him and say, I want to build a new road. Now he has to pray, ask God, God, is this road needed? Should I sanction this? If he does something wrong, the king will ask him, who told you to sanction it? You didn't think? But the Bible says that Daniel was so effective in his work that they found no charge in him. Nothing, they couldn't find any wrong in him. Why? Because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That even the Persian king that came said, uh, Daniel, you only be the governor because we heard some good reports about you. You continue doing what you're doing. You're the best. Daniel said, okay. Right. So again, corporate anointing. Thirdly, we look at uh, 
David. David is a king. Now, the Bible says that even before any war that he had to go for, any battle, he prayed, he asked God, God, should I go for this battle or should I not go? He sought the Lord's guidance in every step of the way. As a king, there were many decisions that he had to make for the people of Israel. But in all of that, he was a fruitful king. He reigned as king for 33 years. Imagine, 33 years David was a king. So the gifts that God gives us, the supporting ministry gifts, we can ask God. Maybe some of us are saying, okay, I want to be a, a graphics designer. I want to be a you know, video editor. Whatever it is, ask the Holy Spirit to open doors for you. Ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God will give you the opportunities. Right? The local church and ministry gifts. As you have these ministry gifts, stay connected to the local church. Do not isolate yourself. Very important. It is most often that God begins to use the gifts that you and I have in the local church first. So right now we have a Christian professionals conference. So within the church, you can God can give you opportunities. Right? If it's worship, stay connected to the church. God will give you the opportunities. He'll open the right door. If it's, if it's administration, whatever it is, stay connected to your local church. Okay? Everyone with me? The Holy Spirit is portrayed as wind and water, and the believer as the living stone. Proverbs 18, 16 says, don't be too eager to promote yourself. If you have a gift, God will open the door for you to your leadership. So powerful, right? Don't be eager to promote yourself. Stay quiet, stay humble. I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this story. This is a real story. This happened. How many of you have heard of Mohan C. Lazarus? You've heard of him, I guess, right? In 2012, we had a Vision India conference. Do we have time? We had a Vision India conference. We had about 20,000 people come to Delhi. Um, and we had gone there as a team. And 20,000 odd people in this big stadium. Uh, and we had invited many people. So I was in the team of um, hospitality. That means what? These people will come, these preachers, all famous people. So I had to go arrange a cab for them. So they would come from the airport. So I'll be at the entrance, uh, two, of, two or three of us. And so we had to escort them, welcome them, bring them to the green room. There's a green room at the back. So we offer them tea, coffee, lunch, food, whatever it is. And then they, you know, they do a little bit of uh, makeup, all of that. We tell them, okay, now in five minutes, you have to go on the stage. So we lead them from the back into the main stage. Hospitality. Give them water, all of that. Now, this team, I saw people who they really are. Really. And at a young age, I thank God that he put me into that team. Because I, the people that I saw, I said, this is what I will never do in my if I become a leader. This is what I will do. Some of them who came were so arrogant. So arrogant that I thought to myself, don't even go on the stage. If I was there, the, if I was the leader there, I would have said, don't go on the stage. So arrogant. One, one lead, one person, okay, he said, if it's not an AC room, I'm not coming. Not an AC cab, I'm not coming. He's telling me that on the phone. I said, see, whatever cab is coming, you have to take it and come. Now, see, I've, I've, I've become a believer, but I was still very harsh in the way I used to talk. I said, you better sit in that cab and come. There's nothing else I'm sending. If you don't come, somebody else will preach in your session. They, they sat and came after that. And they came, who's this person I spoke to? I said, you spoke to me. Tell me what. Now, these are all big shots. huh? You know them. If I tell the name, you know them. All from North India only. Okay. Big shots. They came. And the food is cold, I don't want. The tea is cold, I don't want. This is not good. That is not good. Why is there no AC here? Why the fan is so bad? All complaining. They go on the stage. Bolo Yeshu Masiki. Everyone will say Jai. You'll spend some 10 minutes you know, uh, curling that handkerchief. I was so upset. 
And I said, God, this is something I will never do. Never do this. Because I saw what they are. But there was this one man who came. Simple man. With slippers he came. I called him. I said, the cab is come. He said, no problem. I'll catch an auto and come. He came in the auto. He got off there. He hugged me and he said, thank you for inviting me. I said, I didn't invite. I'm just you know, serving here. He took, I took him inside. And he went to the corner of the room, just sat, and he began to pray. A few minutes later, I said, do you want some tea, coffee? He said, no, I just want some hot water. My throat will feel better. I gave him some hot water. I gave him water, and he sat. I said, in 10 minutes, you'll have to go on stage. You'll just follow me. He said, ready. 10 minutes, OK. Quickly, he opened one scripture. He was reading that scripture. And I was noticing him. And he just came with me quietly, no talking. All of these other people know. Uh, continuously talking. Right? Commenting on everything that's happening, who's coming to preach, who's not preaching, how he preached. This man was quiet. He went on stage. He's speaking in a language that they don't even know. OK? In Tamil. He's speaking in Tamil. 15 minutes into the sermon, people are weeping and crying. They're falling down. The youth are crying. He's just preaching in Tamil. And there's a translator. 20 minutes down the line, everyone has, the people who are demon possessed are manifesting. That was the best one hour that I ever saw. But I, one thing I realized in that age, at that time, very starting of my ministry, I said, this is what I want to see. This is what is called ministry. After the whole thing, right? One hour, people were literally screaming and crying and asking God for forgiveness. He came back. I said, "Do you want some tea, coffee?" He said, "No, I'll have some hot water." He had hot water. I said, "See, cab is come." He said, "No, I want to go visit one family, so I'll take the auto. I'll go to that family, visit them. Then I'll go to the airport. Don't worry about me. No nonsense. Come, delivered." God's power, God's anointing, did the work, went quietly. He was not there when we were giving the trophies, gifts to all the pastors. He was not even there. He said, you keep it with you. But that was something that really touched my life. And I said, if I want to see fruit in my public, in the public ministry, I have to do this. And I saw the, I saw what ministry is about, knowledge. So what am I saying? Now, I'm not saying that all of them were like that, but most of them were there. Nine out of ten were like that. And it was sad. These are all very famous people, huh? I'm telling you. We, some of us worship them. But I saw what the true, your true self, your true character is when nobody is watching you. It's very easy on stage to get people hyped up. And youth will dance for anything. They will shout for anything. You say, uh, say hallelujah, they'll also say hallelujah. Ask them, what is the meaning of hallelujah? I don't know. That's not the point. right? So what I'm trying to say is, when we are serving, we have to serve in humility. Serve knowing that you're serving God, and you'll get eternal fruit. Don't be eager to promote yourself. God will open the door for you. Just wait for that door. OK? We cannot make it on our own. God has made us. God has designed us. And we are to be dependent on others. God, here's the last thing. God uses our imperfections and those, and those around us. And he uses those imperfections to perfect us. We all are imperfect. Me too. We're all learning. We're all growing. But he uses those imperfections to make us perfect. Amen? OK, so don't promote yourself. Promote God. Always set the focus on God. OK, so we'll stop here. Uh, the next class we will not have, because I won't, I won't be there. But when we come back, we, we all are there together at the youth mission. So when we come back from the youth missions, I'll just need uh, 
one more day, two more hours, I'll be able to complete the portions. All right? Is that okay? All right. Have a good time. I'll see you all at Youth Missions. God bless.